good morning, Saturday, sitting out in the front of our house in our portico, tucked away. It's one of my favorite spots to sit and read a book. I always have some coffee. I think and dream here. And today I was just thinking about um, what, what it takes to sustain and um, integrate newer, healthier habits into our lifestyle with the focus specifically just for today on food and um, diet, but not being on a diet, just what we consume. And um, full disclosure, I have been emotional, an emotional eater my whole life. One of my um, kind of a breakthrough was when I realized that food is emotional. It's, it's food takes in all of the senses. So we don't just eat just for nutrition. We eat to satisfy our, our soul. We were wrapped up in memories and history and all those things actually matter. Um, but there are other things that matter too. How we um, fit the reality of nutrition into our lives. And um, really the first being is fitting it into our schedule. If we don't fit it into the schedule, it's just not gonna happen. So um, making room for meal prep, planning, shopping, um, dreaming about what would taste good. Be getting inspired is really big because even someone like me who's been cooking since I was like 13, 14, I still have to inspire myself. <laughs> I, I still need to see a picture of something that I wanna make or eat. Um, so that's that's all part of fitting it into into your lifestyle into into our lifestyles and um the other thing is outcome we're just not wired to 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 waste time on things that are tedious or difficult or just too hard so um and and that where the outcome isn't great if it if it doesn't if our all that time and energy that we put into cooking if it doesn't taste amazing it's just, we're not gonna sustain that either. It's just hard to integrate anything that takes time and effort if the outcome's not great. So learning how to, um, the techniques of cooking vegetables, for instance, so that they taste amazing, that's huge and without too much time. The other thing too that has really helped me is to create ease having um you know so many staple idol items just at my fingertips is is big because again i don't want to take too much effort but there's forethought in in planning and setting up your workspace your um kitchen in a way that just uh makes it almost kind of effortless um today i'm so excited i'm gonna make a um, delicious, spicy, can be sweet, um, Szechuan, wonton, chicken soup. It's an old favorite recipe that I, it's kind of a staple recipe. A lot of what I already have in, um, in my kitchen, I can throw it together. And hopefully my husband, Tommy, will be joining me to, um, to taste this delicious soup. So let's get started. On the topic of creating ease in the kitchen and in, in cooking, I always, first thing I do is I don an apron. Um, I like aprons that cover my clothes. It just takes too much time to go change into grunge clothes before cooking. So that just is a time saver. Um, the hair always goes up for a couple of reasons. One, nobody wants hair in their food. Two, it keeps the smells from getting into the hair. So um, jewelry comes off, sleeves that can be pulled up. It's like being completely ready to cook. Um, I like to grab all of my ingredients and have them out and available. At arm's length or hand's length, really, I always have citrus, lemons, limes, 
um, scallions, onions, garlic, seasonings, olive oil. Um, all of my utensils are out. Today, we're gonna start with um, boiling some chicken stock. For this recipe, it's just a one pot dish, which makes everything really easy. The beauty of this soup is that while the chicken stock is heating up, um, you can chop as you go. Um, my previous video, I showed how to um, dice up the onions and the carrots, the ginger and the garlic, and I'm gonna be doing that today as well. Okay, so the chicken stock is boiling. In go the veg. And by the way, I did peel the carrots um, before I chopped them up. Next will be ginger and garlic. we've just been boiling we've boiled the four uh, three quarts of chicken stock the we put in the onions carrots garlic and ginger and now if depending on how much salt you want instead of adding any salt I use just a full um, full sodium soy sauce and it just gives it a little bit of flavor and a little more salt and then the, the, the secret to creating the, the heat is a chili garlic sauce and below um, I will add the, the name of this. I love this sauce and it's very hot, very spicy and it actually adds even a little bit more, more garlic. And that's just to taste. So I always start out uh, a little bit conservative and then just add a little bit more depending on how, how, much, heat, how much heat I want. As the onions and garlic and veg cooks and boils away, I'm gonna turn it to simmer. I'm gonna taste for the spice, how, how much uh, chili heat I want. It's already pretty spicy. That was about maybe one and a half teaspoons. Now I'm gonna chop, chop up mushrooms and bok choy and they go in next. The best way to clean mushrooms is not to submerge them in water, but to use a, a slightly damp paper towel and wipe off the dirt. See? Mushrooms absorb a lot of liquid, and so if you wash them in water, they'll absorb that water.
I was the youngest in my family and um, the last one home. So about the time I was 13, 14 years old, I started cooking and um, I've never stopped. My mom was kind of over it. And I think that's probably why I've thought a lot about why some people enjoy cooking and others don't is it's not just about like, do I like cooking or do I not like cooking? But it's, it's about making it fun. Enjoyment's huge. And having, being challenge, challenging yourself with new recipes so that you're not just bored or stuck in a rut. And again, having that great outcome is huge. Creating ease is huge. Inspirations, maybe even the most important thing, getting inspired. But if you've noticed with this soup, this is all, at, at this point, other than the chicken stock, and it could be made with vegetable stock as well, this is a full veggie soup at this point. You can stop at this point and have a vegetable soup. It's a good appetizer before dinner, kind of a filler nourishing you know i've never had it cold i bet it would be good cold too um it can also be a meal you know, adding meat shrimp can go into it chicken today we're going to put in chicken um, even if um you're really tight for time um i've actually put in canned chicken breasts because i had everything at hand on hand and uh, it makes it a full meal. And then of course those frozen wontons are amazing. All right, so this is gonna now, now go into the, into the soup. I'm taking off these ends. They're probably not gonna be that great. Oh, I like to put everything in a bowl. Just makes it cleaner. I'm a clean as you go kind of a gal. Highly recommend it. Always have a clean workspace. Let's see how much I end up, end up using here. Look at that. It's just beautiful. A little bit more. This could also be made with Napa cabbage or even regular cabbage if bok choy isn't in season. It's spring now and bok choy is a seasonal vegetable. And it's so crunchy and just fresh and light. There you have it. That's a beautiful vegetable soup. So I bought a rotisserie chicken last night and shredded it, shredded the breast and into the soup it goes. Depending on how, how much protein you want in your soup depends on what goes in. I also thought um, diced large chunks of cod would be good in this too. At this point, I'm gonna turn up the heat. It's been simmering. The vegetables are fully cooked. The chicken is warm, but for the wontons to go in, uh, it says five minutes boiling for five minutes. So I need to get this back to a rolling boil and then the wontons, oh, I think I hear my husband. Hey, Tommy, come here, come here. I'm making your favorite soup. Mm, I'm starving. <laughs> this is your this is your favorite chicken wonton soup that you love so much. Mm, delicioso. <laughs> so dinner, lunch, about ten, five ten minutes. Okay, okay, I'll be back. All right. Can't wait. 
my husband is the fun to my series, so. All right, so here we go. We're at a boil again. Here's another point about wontons or any kind of pasta in any kind of soup. The longer it stays in the soup, even if once you put it in the fridge or if you freeze it, it continues, the pasta continues to absorb, absorb the liquid and, um, and that's not good. It just turns your pasta mushy. So if this isn't all gonna be eaten right now, it's better to portion out your pasta um, as you go. And then this right now with just the chicken and the vegetables is a perfect soup to freeze. And, um, and then again, once you thaw it, then you add your wontons once it's boiling again. On second thought, I am gonna save about half of this for the freezer for maybe next week, for another day. This is a very simple step. I'm going to put about half of it in another pot. It's already pretty much boiling. It, it'll come to a boil quickly. I'm going to add a little agave because I like a sweet and spicy chicken wonton soup. And, um, but that's just me, it's not necessary. And maybe the next time I won't want it as sweet, but um, that, that's just, that's personal taste. Oh boy, this smells so good. I like to put a little crunchy, fresh scallion on top, greens and white parts. Just adds a little crunch. Mm. All right, so I've served Tommy. And the one other thing I wanted to say about this soup is that I put it in huge serving bowls and um, we've served many friends for little last minute dinner parties. This is such an easy, um, make ahead stock that the last minute you just put in the boil it and put in the wontons. But, um, I, all I can say is you put this in front of your guests and they're thrilled to get a big, beautiful bowl of soup. Mm, I was jonesing all the way back on my bike ride, knowing how wonderful this is. It's so beautiful. Cheers. Looking. as good as usual. Better. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'm so good. How was your ride? Long. <laughs>